Hi everybody, welcome back to the Reaper 101 tutorial series with me, Adam Steele. Today we're talking about wildcards, exporting your files, getting stems, multi-tracks in any format that you want with the snap of a finger so that every time you get asked by the client, oh, can you just do everything again with one small change? Yes, I can. Click, click, done. Thank you very much. Not wasting an hour of your time. Now, this series is brought to you by the Ultimate Reaper Guide on Pro Mix Academy. That's where I go through all of this in loads and loads of detail, right from the start, right to the finish, talking about every plugin, all the advanced features, all the cool stuff that you can do, doing a full recording and mixing session with you guys watching so you can see how I use all of these cool features. Check that out in the description below. So let's say that your work is finished, or at least at a point where it needs to be sent to somebody else. At this point, I'm gonna look at this project in Reaper here, and I'm gonna say, right, this is what I want. So I need to export this. Now, if I go straight to file and render, that's generally where we want to be, and this window is a large amount of what we're gonna do. It has some defaults that I like to change. Firstly, we have the source. So what is it that we're committing to a file? And generally, master mix is exactly what it says. Whatever we're hearing is what this is going to print. We can change that to stems, so selected tracks, in which case, if we look back at our project, if I was to click on, say, music one, and then Apple click that one, that one, and that one, say, that would now export those, if I change this to selected stems, it would now export those four tracks as four files. We've got master mix and stems, which is both. Uh, we've got selected tracks via master. If you've got master effects on your master bus, like compressors, saturators, limiters, and someone's asked you for stems for your tracks that have to go through your particular full set of processing, this is a way to do it. By doing selected tracks via master, this will go one at a time and export each one of those just soloed through the master bus. It has to be one at a time because you only have one set of master processing, but this still saves you time that you don't have to keep coming back and manually soloing a track, exporting that master, soloing the next track. This will just do all of that for you in an automated one by one, pow, pow, pow kind of situation, which can save you a lot of time in the long run. Then there's the region render matrix, which we'll talk about later, selected media items and razor edit areas. We've not even talked about razor editing, but you can, if you so desire, render out just, let's say I think this little idea is great here. I want a friend of mine to hear just this. I could change this to selected media items. And if I go selected media items via master, again, that will export that with all the master processing applied. If we have multiple files selected, that will take some time, but it's an automated process. So you can go make a cup of coffee while you wait for it to finish. Let's go back to master mix for a minute because the next thing to talk about is the bounds. The bounds are by default the entire project and I almost never use that personally. What I like to do is use the time selection and then looking back at my time play, if I just drag with my left mouse and make a time highlight, that is what will now be exported from the start of this to the end of that selection. It's worth talking about project regions at this point, if we haven't already. If I press Shift and R, that will now make this time selection that I made into a region. Regions are like markers, but they also have an end point. If I double click on where it says number one at the top with a Shift held down, I can now change this. Let's call this Noises 1. And let's say that this track behind us, this one from JHS, Let's just select that. I've got a nice little shortcut to make that my time selection. I custom bound that to Shift and Z. If I right click on the timeline at the top, I can go to create region from selection. So this is now region two. And if I call this, I don't know, backing. You could do this if you were songwriting with regions for verse, chorus, 
all those kind of things. That's a nice way you can then rearrange them as needed. I could pick up this whole region and move this further over like I just did, as you can see here. I just dragged it and dropped it further on. But I'm getting ahead of myself and let's say that this with the vocal messing around that we were doing earlier, let's just make that region three and I'm going to rename that edited stuff. So if I change the bounds from time selection to project regions, we've got either all project regions or selected project regions. So in all project regions, I've now got three files for the three different regions that I made that are going to happen. And if I then change the master mix to stems, I could then have this track, that track, and this track for all of the regions. And that will then for every part of the song, or if it's an album, maybe every song that's in this project, it will give me each stem that I ask for automated. Below that, we have the region manager. So if I click the region manager button, I can select certain regions, maybe not select another one if I don't need another version of one of the songs I'm working on, for instance. Or there's the region matrix. The region matrix can get a little bit scary, but all it really is, is a set of tick boxes. So what I would tend to do personally is I would, for all my regions, tick master mix and then start by ticking all tracks. And then if there are any songs, let's say I've got a 10 track album and I want all the stems, but one of them doesn't have the tambourine, one of them doesn't have the lead guitar, one of them doesn't have a backing vocal. There's no point to me rendering out empty stems. So I can just untick each one of these boxes that I don't need the stem for on that particular region. And that means that that region render matrix is now set. So if I do come back to this project, let's say I change a few plugins, change a few EQs, change a few volumes, I could then hit the render region matrix again, and that would give me this exact set of files again, with not having to add extra blanks in and without me having to define this twice. There's a little button for tail as well. Let's say your song just stops, but there's a reverb tail afterwards from an effect. Because that's not a file, quite often Reaper will kind of get confused and just stop the render. And that means that the end of the reverb tail will be strangely cut. So by clicking the tail here, you can give it some milliseconds. This is one second, a thousand milliseconds. If you want to have a longer tail to give it plenty of time for things like reverbs to finish, you might want to put more on the, than that. I personally don't like using the tail. I like to extend my regions out by ear, but if you're doing it this way, that's an option for you. Below that, there's directory, which I usually use the directory of the, you know, the folder of the project that I'm working in, but you can change that. There's file name, which we'll come back to in a minute. And then render two is giving me an example of what the files are going to be called. And then where it says 40 files at the moment, that changes depending on the number of regions, the number of tracks for stems. If I click on this, it gives me a list of every single one. And right now they're just called uh, ultimate guide one dash 001.wave all the way through to dash 040. And those are terrible names, but we can change all of that with wild cards. So with wild cards, we use the dollar sign and then we put a particular name in. We can define things with the wildcards button. So let's say, let's start with region number or region num. Then let's put a dash in our file name. Then dollar region, which is the name of the region. Then dash, then dollar track number. Then dash dollar track. And that's the name of the track. So now if I look under 40 files, it gives me double O is the master channel. And then it gives me the track name and the name of the region for all of these. So now when I hit go, every one of these will be properly named. If I click the wildcards button, I happen to know those four wildcards off the top of my head. But if I click the wildcards button, it gives me a whole list of these wildcards that you can use that will help you to have a proper naming scheme. If you are the kind of person that likes working with defining things like 
like the date or the tempo or the time signature or marker names or things like uh, what the sample rate is and the bit depth and the date and time that it was made so that it's automatically generated when you hit go you can have it define the day the the, the time that 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 file was made in the name automatically so that each time you go back and re-render, it's not just version one, version two, version three, it's time stamped in the file name. That could be really useful for more corporate working environments or if you need a really detailed way of tracking everything. Another thing that you can do that's quite clever with your uh, wildcards is you can have it make folders in here. So if I made this to region num and region and then delete that little dash and make that forward slash. That will now make me a folder called the, num the number and the name of each region followed by those folders having all the track numbers and names in for each one of those. You can see in this folder now it's made me one, two, three folders. Each one has the track names in there. And so I could do that, I could do that with project versions as well. So every time I could have nice, neat, ordered, folded stems in a single press. And so if I automated, because this is the window we'll come back to in a second, I could add in here, wildcards, I think it's dollar date. Ah, so dollar time isn't, isn't a shortcut, but I can add in specifically in whatever format I like two digit year, month, day, hour, minute, don't bother with second personally. But there's all sorts of things that you can do with that to really make that yours. And under wildcards, I could also save this. It comes up with recent patterns because I've made a few different ones for different projects I've been working on. So I could reuse one of these wildcard names. Below that, we have to choose what formats we want this in. Firstly, we choose the sample rate. I tend to go with the same sample rate as the project unless there's a specific need. Uh, again, channel stereo or mono, I usually go with stereo. But if I'm making stems, there is a little tick box a little further down, which is tracks with only mono media. So like uh, a mono guitar file to mono files, because it really annoys me when somebody sends me a file to mix and it's got loads of mono guitars that come as stereo files. This tick box will stop that happening. And then importantly, there's full speed offline. So if your mix is entirely in the box, you can use that and it will very quickly chew through the entire file and make something for you. But online render is important if you're doing this using things like analog inserts, analog outboard, or if you want to be able to hear this coming out in real time. Online render actually plays back the track and saves the track to disc at real time, which does have its uses. Underneath, we've got multi-channel tracks to multi-channel files. Not every uh, DAW will support multi-channel files, but if you have like a six channel or 128 channel track, maybe you're working with Immersive or Atmos or something, that tick box will let that happen. There are some more options here, but they're quite esoteric. And then there's primary and secondary output format. For output format, there's things like WAV, uh, there's MP3, which is often used, or GoPurse, FLAC. DDP, I made a whole video on the Promix Academy, on the Promix Academy YouTube channel about DDP and Glass Master images. But those are the main ones you're probably gonna use are WAV and MP3. But there's loads of options. There's video if you're editing video in Reaper, which you can do, which is wild. And then so you choose your bit depth and file type. I usually write the broadcast chunk in there. And then secondary output format, I could have say MP3 at the same time, so it's not having to render out twice. So I can send an MP3 to an artist to listen to while sending the wave master out to the mastering house or something like that. It can be useful. And in each one of these options, there are all their sub options, like the bit rate for MP3s of how big the file is, all that kind of stuff. There are even options now, like there's a second pass render. So if you're so if you're rendering a loop that's got things like delays and things going on in that loop, what it'll do is it'll play through the entire thing, let it build up things like delays. And as it loops around for the second time, then it starts to save the file, which means that endless loops really work nicely now. Really great for game designers. There's even a button at the bottom for saving render stats. 
uh, which is to do with how loud something is in RMS and LUFS. That could be a really useful thing to have if you're rendering out to go to a mastering engineer and they say, this is too loud, it's at minus six, and you've got the stats that say, actually it was at minus 14, something's gone wrong here, or whatever the conversation may be, it will give you a text file with all the extra stuff in to show you uh, exactly what the results were of the, the levels and all that kind of stuff. So there you go, that's how you get all of your stems named and kind of neatly organized in one go. It might seem like it can take a little while, but once you get used to it, it's really fast. And when it comes to revisions and changes, it's only had to be done once. So you can next time not even think about it. You can go make my changes, maybe save a new project version and then click, make me a new set of files, goodbye. And it will save you so much brain space once that's done. That's a big thing for me, is being able to not have to think about those kind of nerdy little details in the real creative moments. So yeah, I hope that helps you a lot. If that helps you, you'll find loads more great tips and tricks like this in the Ultimate Reaper Guide at Promix Academy, the link for which is down in the description below. But in the meantime, thanks everybody for watching. The next video is about VST instrument drums and routing those because it can be a little bit complicated. So until then, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.